Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus 3 divided by x minus 2 equals 3x minus 6 divided by 2x plus 6. And we're going to be solving for f of x. We could also say just solve for x, but I wanted to make it clear. We're going to find an expression for f of x. In other words, the expression inside the parentheses is too complicated. We're going to simplify it. All right. And I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. All right. So the first method is pretty good because even though it takes longer than the second one, it is a general method. Uh, so it can pretty much be applied to any function as long as you can solve for x. So let me show you how that works. I want to replace the whole thing with another variable like t. t is my favorite variable these days. So let's go ahead and set this equal to t. And then from here, we're going to solve for x. Make sense? We're going to solve for x. And let's go ahead and do it. How can we solve for x? We can go ahead and cross multiply first. And now put the x terms together. xt minus x is equal to, if you, you bring the x over here, that's going to be a 2t plus 3. Factor out an x. In other words, you're finding the inverse of this rational function, but it's going to be in t, and x will be equal to this. Now, when you plug this in on both sides, what do you mean by both sides? Remember, our original equation was f of x plus 3 divided by x minus 2 equals 3x, I can't write it, 3, 3x minus 6 divided by 2x plus 6. So I'm going to go ahead and replace these x's with this gigantic expression. But when I do on the left-hand side, you probably know that I'm going to get a t, right? But if you really want to check it out, you can get the, you can do that, and you'll be getting t. Here we go. Let's check it out. 2t plus 3 divided by t minus 1, my plus 3. And then at the bottom, same thing, but this time minus 2 equals 3 times this expression, 2t plus 3 divided by t minus 1, minus 6. And at the bottom, 2 times the same expression. Over and over, we're going to use it, right? Minus 6. I mean, plus 6, not minus. That was a plus, right? Here we go. That's a plus sign. Okay, cool. Now, if you simplify the left-hand side, you're going to get 2t plus 3, and then plus 3t minus 3 by making a common denominator. And then at the bottom, you're going to get 2t plus 3 minus 2t plus 2. Why did I not include the denominators t minus 1? Because they are the same. When we flip and multiply, they're going to cancel out. Make sense? Here, the same thing happens. 6t plus 9 minus 6t plus 6. Again, I'm ignoring t minus 1 because they're going to cancel out. 4t, 4t plus 6 plus 6. Awesome. Oh, no. Plus 6t minus 6. Okay, I just ignored the 6 and wrote it as 6. Okay. Now, if you simplify this, you're going to get the following. 3 is going to cancel out here. 2t is going to cancel out. You're going to get 5t divided by 5, which is t. I told you it was going to be t, but we still checked it. I don't know why. And then this is going to give you 15 over, 6 cancels out, 10t. Okay, what does that mean? Simplify, divide by 5, and you're going to get this. Wait a minute, t is just a dummy variable, right? We can discard it and use another variable. How about x? Wait a minute, t and x are re related in a different way. We don't care. These are variables. You can dispose them. You can use another one. We don't care. It doesn't matter. Same thing. So f of x can be expressed as 3 over 2x. Make sense? Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And we'll compare our results. Hopefully we get the same thing, right? Okay. So I have f of x plus 3 divided by x minus 2 equals 3x minus 6 divided by 2x plus 6. Remember what I told you about the first method. First method is longer, hopefully, right? This is shorter. But it's more general. So you can apply it to many cases, whereas the second method is kind of specific. But a lot of times on math competitions, such as the American math competitions or any other competition that you can think of, like Amy, uh, problems are usually given that way. So there's going to be a shortcut most of the time. So you should first look for a shortcut, especially if you only have two minutes per problem. Come on, who's going to do all the work, right? But if it's like a research problem or you have plenty of time, then you can definitely do whatever you want. 
Anyways, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to focus on the expression on both sides, right-hand side and left-hand side. Now, why is it important? Because I want to relate these two expressions, this one and this one, in a functional way. So, for example, if the second expression, let's call this first and let's call this second. If the second expression is 2 times the first, then I got my function, f of x equals 2x, get it? Or if the second expression is the first expression squared, then I got f of x equals x squared, make sense? So we have to kind of somewhat relate these two things, if they are relatable. Is that a word? Who knows? Now, here's what we're going to do then. We're going to focus on factoring the 3x minus 6 over 2x plus 6 first, because it's factorable. Come on. Take out a 3, you get x minus 2. Take out a 2, x plus 3. Now, take this out, and you get 3 over 2 times x minus 2 over x plus 3. Does that look familiar? Look at this expression, and look at this expression, and look at it one more time if you didn't get it. Yes, they are reciprocals. Awesome. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as f of x plus 3 over x minus 2 equals 3 over 2 times x minus 2 over x plus 3. I just want to write it once first like this. And then I'll talk about the reciprocity, the state of being reciprocals. So these two expressions are reciprocals because if you flip one, you get the other. Do you get it? So what does that mean? If we replace this with something, this is going to be the reciprocal. What am I going to replace it with? What do you think? I'll use x. I mean, you can use t, v, whatever, but it doesn't matter. Let's use x as a shortcut. And if you don't like this x, you can use a curly x like this or a big x and then change it to normal x, whatever. Same idea. But whatever you use, this expression is going to be 1 over x if the other one is x. Therefore, this is going to be the answer. Wait a minute. Is that the same thing? 3 over 2x. Yay. If you just cross multiply. What it, no, it's not cross multiply. What is it called? Multiply across. Yes. 3 over 2x is going to be the answer. Now, one thing you can definitely do is to check your work. But well, wait a minute. Are we going to plug this in? Well, you could, like, uh, how do you evaluate this? Easy. It's just a reciprocal. Oh, come on. We already checked it. But you can do the following. This, this won't take too long. You can go ahead and replace, if you go back to the original expression, and kind of like, obviously, you don't want to use x equals 0 because that's going to make it unified. How about x equals 1? Wait a minute. That's not good either. So replace x with something. How about that? Uh, I want to use x equals 1 here. And that's going to give me f of 4 divided by negative 1, which is f of negative 4. Great. And on the right-hand side, if I use a 1, that's going to give me quickly negative 3 over 8. Awesome. So f of negative 4 is supposed to be negative 3 over 8. Can we check that here real quick? Absolutely. f of negative 4 is 3 over 2 times negative 4, which happens to be negative 3 over 8. Of course, it's going to work. And one value is not going to do it, but come on, we, we've done all the work. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.